By the suggestion of one of you guys, I've gone ahead and made chromal chloride. Unfortunately, I have horrible organization and I didn't really write down who it was who suggested it, but thank you to whoever did. So the first question to address is what is chromal chloride and why do we want to make it? The first reason that we would make it is less than scientific and it's more or less just because it's pretty cool. It's a blood red, strongly oxidizing, fuming chromium based liquid and I kind of have a soft spot for fuming liquids. In terms of chemistry, it has a few niche uses, but it's pretty limited because it's not very compatible with a lot of things. It's too reactive to be used directly and it has to be diluted, but it's also too reactive to be used with most solvents. The most commonly used compatible solvents are the chlorinated ones like chloroform or dichloromethane that you've seen me use in previous videos. Like I said, I made the chromal chloride because I just thought it was cool, but I am going to oxidize toluene to benzaldehyde. What's special about chromal chloride is that even though it's a pretty strong oxidizing agent, it really doesn't oxidize past the aldehyde to the carboxylic acid. This is pretty unique for strong oxidizing agents, and this conversion of toluene to benzaldehyde is actually a pretty unique reaction. Toluene is a solvent for paint thinners, but when it's oxidized to benzaldehyde, that's actually the artificial flavoring that's used for almond flavor. Anyway, all that business is for a later video, so let's get started on what's needed to carry this out. For this experiment, we use unidized salt, concentrated sulfuric acid, and potassium dichromate. The sulfuric acid was distilled from drain cleaner in another video that will be uploaded eventually. It's a little yellow because I messed up and got it contaminated, but it's more than good enough for this synthesis. I started out by adding the salt to a mortar to try to powderize it, but it proved to be actually pretty difficult. I kind of gave up and used my magic bullet instead, but a coffee grinder could have also been used. Just after several seconds, it's a really fine powder. I then transferred what looked like about 60 grams of salt to a small crystallizing dish. I then moved it aside, cleaned up a bit, and brought out my second crystallizing dish. Into this crystallizing dish, we pour out about 90 grams of potassium dichromate. With both of the powdered ingredients in crystallizing dishes, they are put in an oven and dried. After they've cooled, 50 grams of sodium chloride is measured out and added to a mortar. On top of the salt, I poured in 80 grams of the potassium dichromate. This step is really important because the sodium chloride and the potassium dichromate have to be mixed really well. The way the reaction works is the sodium chloride and the potassium dichromate react with the sulfuric acid separately and the products of these each individual reactions form the chromal chloride. So for this reason, it's very important to have it mixed as intimately as possible so the products of each of the reactions can immediately react with each other. Ideally, I'd just use the magic bullet to mix this stuff, but I used that magic bullet for food and I didn't really want to get potassium dichromate in it. Anyway, once it seems like it's a uniform color, I add it to a 3 necked 1 liter round bottom flask. It's important to use a funnel here so none of the powder gets into the ground glass joint because that would compromise the seal. I then remove the funnel and I add a stir bar. So now it's for the fun process of greasing all of the joints with concentrated sulfuric acid. I do this by dipping a plastic pipette into the sulfuric acid and then rubbing it onto the glass joint. It's then put into the ground glass joint and twisted a little to complete the seal. When enough sulfuric acid is added, it should be just like if grease were used and it will be sealed and easy to spin in the joint. The lighting changed here a little bit because I moved the entire apparatus outside. To the addition funnel on the left, I added 150 milliliters of 98% concentrated sulfuric acid. It's really important to get the most concentrated sulfuric acid possible because any water present would react with the chromal chloride as it forms. Another added benefit is that concentrated sulfuric acid loves water and it will pull and pick up the water that's produced in the reaction. 
Once the addition funnel is being filled with the sulfuric acid, we can attach it to our apparatus and we're pretty much good to go. Once we've taken a few deep breaths and we're ready to deal with the chromal chloride, we can start adding the sulfuric acid. Right when the sulfuric acid touches the powdered mixture, you can see a lot of bubbling occurs. The bubbling that's occurring isn't the production of chromal chloride, but mostly of hydrochloric acid gas when the sulfuric acid reacts with the sodium chloride. Under ideal conditions, we would want the sulfuric acid reacting with the potassium dichromate at the same time to produce chromium trioxide, which would then react with the hydrochloric acid and form our chromal chloride. That might be a little bit hard to follow, but we're basically just making two products in two different reactions, hoping that they'll come together and react to form one product, which is our chromal chloride. However, since we're working with the powder and the mixture isn't perfect, this reaction isn't going to be super efficient and we're going to produce quite a bit of hydrochloric acid gas. To try to compensate a bit for this lack of efficiency, a slight excess of sodium chloride is used. Here's the overall reaction that's occurring, and we're producing sodium bisulfate, potassium bisulfate, and water as side products. This overall balanced reaction equation is obtained by adding each of the smaller reaction equations together. A little bit of tinkering must be done, and they can't just be simply added together, but if you're interested on in learning how to add chemical equations together, I've included a link in the description that talks about it. At this point, we're not heating anything, but you can see it's become quite red. The entire distillation apparatus is filled with a yellow gas, but this is mostly hydrochloric acid gas with a little bit of hexavalent chromium. You really don't want to breathe this because it is acid vapor and also the chromium is a known carcinogen. Also at this point, I added an ice bath to cool the chromal chloride that came over. I let the reaction sit for several minutes to let it react as much as possible before I started to heat it. I started the heating and it eventually starts to bubble quite a bit. Some of the bubbling is chromal chloride coming off, but most of it is actually hydrochloric acid gas. This distillation lets off a lot of hydrochloric acid gas and it's way more than a normal trap will be able to handle. You can see at the other end of the apparatus that hydrochloric acid vapor is pretty much just pouring out. Eventually, the stir bar isn't stuck anymore and it starts to work. As we begin to heat and more chromal chloride comes off, the flask went darker and darker until it's pretty much black. Chromal chloride boils at around 117 degrees Celsius, so it's nice because we don't have to heat it too much. The dark red chromal chloride will slowly climb the distillation apparatus. Once it reaches this point, the chromal chloride will start condensing and coming over into our receiving flask. Here we can see the dark red chromal chloride coming over. You can see that the condenser column actually condenses it pretty well because at the far right end it's nearly colorless. As we continue to boil it, you'll start to notice a yellow color appearing and the red color diminishing. At this point, the distillation is done and we can take it off heating. As the flask cools, you can see a lot of white and yellow vapors moving around. After we wait a while and everything is cool, we can start cleaning it up. I filled the bath with water and added a lot of sodium sulfite. The sodium sulfite will react with the dangerous hexavalent chromium to produce trivalent chromium, which is much safer. The hexavalent chromium is generally red like you see in chromal chloride and potassium dichromate, but the trivalent one is green. You can see that the red remains of the chromal chloride quickly react to form the green color. The remains of the distillation flask was poured into a sodium sulfite solution. The flask is cleaned up with a little bit more water, which is also added to the Erlenmeyer flask. The solution is going to still be really acidic because we didn't do any acid neutralization, and you should be aware of that. Anyway, I put all my chromium waste into my chromium waste bucket. So here we have our yield of chromal chloride, which is about 44 grams. It's pretty dense, almost twice as dense as water, 
so it's only around 23 milliliters. You can see here that when the stopper is removed, it fumes quite a bit. The fuming that you see is when it reacts with moisture in the air to produce hydrochloric acid. After I let it sit out for a bit, I shook it around and you can see that there's some solids in there. I really didn't like this so I decided to clean it up a little and I transferred it to another round bottom flask and left all the solids behind. For those people who are nitpicky, I measured the yield after I did this transfer and not before so none of the solids were included in the weight. I washed the flask containing the residue using a sodium sulfite solution. You can see that it quickly reacts and goes from a red color to a nice green color. I shake the flask around and then I discard it into my chromium waste. So here I am again with my 44 grams of chromal chloride. I actually used my chromal chloride almost immediately afterwards to react it with toluene and form benzaldehyde. The formation of benzaldehyde from toluene is a pretty unique reaction and this reaction is specifically called the Etard reaction. The amount of solvents this reaction can be done in is extremely limited because chromal chloride reacts violently with most of them. Anyway, this is just a shot of the beginning of the reaction and I will be covering it in a future video. For now we're going to continue and play with the chromal chloride that I had left over after carrying out this reaction. I added some of the chromal chloride to water to see how it would react. The moment it's added, it turns the water red and starts to heat up as it reacts with the water. The chromal chloride is reacting with the water to form chromic acid as well as hydrochloric acid. It's the chromic acid that dissolves into the water and gives it the red color. Another common demonstration is to put it on sulfur and have it spontaneously ignite. The rest of this video is actually filmed with my new camera, so it's 4K downscale to 1080p. Ideally the quality should be at least a bit better. Chromal chloride is also supposed to react pretty violently with most organic compounds. Because I'm already expecting some sort of pop, I put a funnel into the beaker to prevent splashing. And then for the very scary part where I dropwise add a little bit of acetone. As you can see with the first drop, nothing really happens. I slowly get more and more courageous and I start adding more than a drop at a time. Still though, nothing really happens. What I expected to happen was for the reaction with acetone to produce enough heat to ignite it to give us a little bit of a pop or some fire. But apparently it doesn't react super violently with acetone. I then tried it with anhydrous ethanol and this time even after the first drop it seemed to be a lot more reactive. So we add a few more drops. And here's the mandatory slow-mo version. And by slow-mo, I mean frame by frame because I don't have a slow motion camera. To neutralize the hexavalent chromium, just like before, we add in some sodium sulfite solution. It quickly turns to the green color, I mix it around and add it to the chromium waste. I did try this reaction using 93% sulfuric acid drain cleaner and it really didn't work. It kind of looked like this the whole time with not much of any chromal chloride coming over and I think the final yield was barely even a few milliliters. It's really important to have the most concentrated sulfuric acid possible because like I said before, this extra water will destroy the yield. Anyway, for now that's all I have to say. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you on the next one. Again, here's a list of the videos that I'm currently editing and future videos I plan to film. In the videos being edited category, you can vote for the one that you want me to publish next, and in the future video category, you can vote for the one that you want me to film next. Also, if you're feeling generous, please donate to my Patreon account because with a bigger budget per video, I can do more things. Also, just as some added information to this generic outro, I've actually gone ahead and made a YouTube fan page. 
When I get my act together, I should be able to set up polls there where people can vote on the next video. Anyway, that's all for now, and I'll see you on the next one.